Today we have this beautiful logarithmic integral. It's the integral from 0 to infinity of log x divided by 1 plus e to the x dx. And the solution development is both super elegant and extremely cool. It's extremely cool because it involves the evaluation of the derivative of the Dirichlet eta function at 1. Which is awesome. So without further delay, we're going to call our integral here i, so we have something to refer to. And notice that the integrand, particularly this 1 by 1 plus e to the x term, motivates us to apply a geometric series expansion. But the problem is, the corresponding geometric series is not convergent on our interval of integration. But we can fix this. We can fix this by expanding using e to the negative x. So multiplying by e to the negative x upstairs and downstairs gives us a much nicer structure to work with. It gives us something convergent. We have e to the negative x times log x divided by 1 plus e to the negative x dx. And now we can invoke a geometric series argument. Recall that the reciprocal of 1 plus x can be written as the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times x to the k, provided that the absolute value of x is less than 1. So that means we can replace uh, x by e to the negative x and hence get the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times e to the negative kx. So all of this implies that our integral i can be written as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times log x divided uh, times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times e to the negative kx integration with respect to x. And notice that this e to the negative x times log x term is independent of the k variable with respect to which you're performing the summation. So you can slip this inside the summation operator and write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times, when you multiply out the two exponential terms, you have to add up their arguments. So you have e to the negative k plus 1 times x times log x dx. Time for the golden question. Can we or can we not switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators? Well, you have this damped exponential function times a logarithmic function. So there are no problems regarding boundedness or convergence. So yes, we can perform the switch up and we can write this as the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times e to the negative k plus 1x times log x dx. And notice that this negative 1 to the k term is independent of the x variable with respect to which we're performing the integration. So we can write this as the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times the integrals from 0 to infinity of e to the negative k plus 1x log x dx. And next up, I'd like to perform a substitution by letting the argument of the exponential term here, letting k plus 1 times x equal to some other variable, call it t. So this implies that dx equals dt divided by k plus 1. So this implies that i equals the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times the integral from, clearly the limits of integration are not bothered by our transformation, so we still have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times log t divided by k plus 1, and the differential element transforms into dt divided by k plus 1. Again, independent, because this 1 by k plus 1 term is independent of the t variable with respect to which we're integrating, just pop this outside the integration operator. And using the properties of the logarithm, we can write the logarithm of a quotient as the difference of their logarithms. So this implies that i equals the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by k plus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t log t dt minus the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t log k plus 1 dt. Okay, cool. Now, this first integral here is the negative of the order Mascheroni constant. And this log k plus 1 term is just a constant with respect to integration. So the integral of e to the negative t from 0 to infinity is just 1. So this implies 
that we can write i now as using the linearity of the summation operator, we can expand the right-hand side as first the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k divided by k plus 1 all times negative Euler Mascheroni. So let me just write this out here. Okay, cool. Minus the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times log k plus 1 divided by k plus 1. And let's perform a transformation of the index variable k, going from the k plus 1 world to the k world. So this implies that i equals negative Euler Mascheroni times the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k, which we immediately recognize as log 2. So let me just write this out here as log 2 minus the sum over k of negative 1. Wait, that is a horrible way to write the summation operator. Uh, yeah, this is hard to write, even with so much practice, especially with a, a digital blackboard. Anyway, so we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times log k divided by k. Now this here is the sum for which we require some introductory analytic number theory. So recall the definition of the Dirichlet eta function. Eta s is defined as the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k to the s, where the real part of s is positive. Now, if you differentiate this with respect to s, then you get eta prime s being equal to the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k to the negative s times log k. And because of the chain rule, you have another negative 1 being multiplied. Now, negative 1 times negative 1 to the k plus 1 means that you have a negative 1 to the k plus 2 and negative 1 squared is just negative 1, so we can write this as negative 1 to the k. So this implies that eta prime s equals the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k times log k divided by k to the s. And if we plug in s being equal to 1, then we get the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times log k divided by k which is pretty similar to the sum we have to evaluate up here in purple, right? The only thing, the only uh, difference here is the negative 1 to the k plus 1 term, which can be fixed. Just write this as negative 1 to the k. Write this logarithmic term a bit closer, and you take that negative 1 to be multiplied by the entire sum, so it cancels out the other negative sign outside. Okay, cool. So... This means that i here equals negative order mascheroni log 2 plus the derivative of the eta function at 1, which we're about to evaluate. Okay, now this is going to be extremely cool. First up, we have to recall the beautiful relationship between the Dirichlet eta function and the Riemann zeta function, where eta s can be written as uh, 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus s times zeta s. And if we differentiate this with respect to s, then we get eta prime s being equal to 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus s times zeta prime s uh, minus, yeah, you're going to get a minus sign. No, wait, chain rule to negatives canceling out. Yeah, you have plus 2 to the 1 minus s times log 2 times zeta s. And how exactly do we evaluate the derivative at 1? Well, first up, let me make something very clear. We're defining eta prime 1 as the limit of eta prime s as s approaches 1 from the right. Now, this limiting definition is necessary because we know the Riemann zeta function and its derivative get pretty cranky when it comes to s being equal to 1. So anyway, how are we going to evaluate this? How are we going to figure out the limit of eta prime s as s approaches 1 from the right? Well, all we need for that is some Laurent series expansion. 
Now, we need the Laurent series expansion around S equals 1 for the Riemann zeta function, its derivative, and this 2 to the 1 minus s function as well. Let's start off with the Riemann zeta function. Now, the zeta function is meromorphic in the complex plane with a simple pole at s equals 1. And it has this really cool Laurent series expansion in terms of these constants, gamma sub k, which are called Stilgius constants. And gamma sub zero is the familiar Euler Mascheroni constant. So yeah, that is pretty cool. And this sorts out to one by s minus one plus the Euler Mascheroni constant plus all terms of order s minus one and above. And the cool thing is that in the limit as s approaches one from the right, all of these terms approach zero. So yeah, we're rid of them in the required limit. And if we differentiate this with respect to s, then we get uh, negative 1 by s minus 1 squared. The derivative of a constant is 0, of course. And one of these terms here is a negative gamma sub 1 times s minus 1. So if you differentiate this with respect to s, you get a negative gamma sub 1 term plus all terms of the order s minus 1 and above, which I'm not going to write out explicitly anymore because you get the idea. They all vanish in the required limit. And finally, we need the Laurent series expansion for 2 to the 1 minus s, which is pretty much the same as the Taylor series expansion in structure because, of the, uh, because 2 to the 1 minus s is an entire function. It's analytic in the entire complex plane. So this sorts out to... 1 minus s minus 1 times log 2 plus s minus 1 squared divided by 2 log 2 squared plus all terms of the order s minus 1 cubed and above. And now you may be thinking, wait. For the zeta function and its derivative, I wasn't concerned with any term like s minus 1 or s minus 1 squared and higher powers because they all vanish in the limit as s approaches 1 from the right. So why am I concerned about terms like s minus 1 squared for the Laurent series expansion of 2 to the 1 minus s? Well, for that, take note of something. For the zeta function's expansion, you have this troublesome 1 by s minus 1 term. And for zeta prime, we have this troublesome negative 1 by s minus 1 squared term. So the logic behind expanding 2 to the 1 minus s all the way up to s minus 1 squared is because the s minus 1 squared term will cancel out this s minus 1 squared in the denominator and this s minus 1 term will cancel out this s minus 1 term in the denominator because you have to multiply out all of these functions in order to evaluate the derivative. So yeah, that's the plan. And now it's time to piece everything together. But first, I'd like to make some adjustments to our equation here. We can write this as eta prime s being equal to log 2 times 2 to the 1 minus s times zeta s. And because of some rearrangements here, we can introduce a negative sign by writing this as 2 to the 1 minus s minus 1 times zeta prime s. And now invoking the Laurent series expansions, we have log 2 being multiplied by 4 2 to the 1 minus s. We had 1 minus s minus 1 times log 2 plus s minus 1 squared divided by 2 times the square of log 2. And for the Riemann zeta function, we have 1 by s minus 1 plus the Euler Mascheroni constant. And we have a negative sign now, so minus 2 to the 1 minus s minus 1. That's pretty much the exact same structure except for the 1 at the beginning. So we have negative s minus 1 times log 2 plus s minus 1 squared divided by 2 divided by the square of the logarithm of 2. And for zeta prime, we had negative 1 by s minus 1 squared plus gamma sub 1. And notice that gamma sub 1 is going to be multiplied by an s minus 1 term and an s minus 1 squared term. So in the limit as s approaches 1 from the right, both of those terms are going to vanish. So yeah, it really doesn't, it doesn't matter whether or not you include the gamma sub 1 term anyway. Okay, now for the fun stuff. Notice that we have log 2 
multiplied by s minus 1, the reciprocal of s minus 1, that is. So we have log 2 divided by s minus 1. And for all of this stuff, we're going to get, once we multiply this term and this term, we're going to get log 2 divided by s minus 1. And here we have two negatives cancelling out pretty nicely. So you get a positive sign, but there's a negative sign outside too. So you have log 2 divided by s minus 1 minus log 2 divided by s minus 1. So they cancel out beautifully. And you're rid of the reciprocals of s minus 1 terms. Wow, that was awesome. Anyway, uh, still some work to do. If you multiply this s minus 1 squared term by the reciprocal of 1 by s minus 1 squared, then positive sign, negative sign gives you a negative sign, and this negative sign outside will give you uh, a positive sign, so you're left with uh, the s minus 1 squared terms cancel out, so you have uh, the square of log 2 divided by 2, and that wraps up the story for the expansion over here. Now, what about the terms remaining? Well, for the terms remaining, we have uh, the, the euler mascheroni constant being multiplied by 1 and then being multiplied by log 2. So you're definitely going to be left with gamma times log 2. Okay, cool. And if you multiply gamma by this s minus 1 term and the s minus 1 squared terms, they both go to 0 in the limit as s approaches 1 from the right. Okay, cool. And what about multiplying this term by the reciprocal of s minus 1? Well, that will cancel out the s minus 1s, and you also have this negative sign and this log 2 term. So you're left with a negative, the square of log 2. So negative squared, uh, negative log 2 squared plus the half, one half of log 2 squared will give us a negative one half of log 2 squared. Okay. And if you multiply this term by the reciprocal of s minus 1, again, you get something of the order of s minus 1. So we're clubbing all of that stuff together as stuff of the order of s minus 1 and higher. And what you have now is a Laurent series expansion for eta prime s around s equals 1. And let me just give myself some writing space so I can write a better eta yeah much better so this is the Laurent series expansion for eta prime s around s equals one okay cool and all that's left is to evaluate it in the limit as s approaches one from the right this will give us the derivative at one and all of these terms are going to zero in the limit and we're left with gamma log 2 minus 1 half of the square of log 2, which is beautiful. And this was incredible. It was just amazing. It was incredibly satisfying as well. And now would be a good time to like and subscribe. Anyway, let's return to our integration problem. So I equaled negative Euler Mascheroni log 2 minus the derivative of the eta function at 1, correct? So that means you have minus, uh, wait, 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 it was plus or minus? Let me check, let me just check, you can't be, uh, can't be too short. Yep, it's a plus sign, so I have to add the derivative of the Dirichlet eta function at 1, so I have negative order master only log 2 plus order master only log 2 minus 1 half of the square of log 2 and these things cancel out and finally we conclude that the integral from 0 to infinity of log x divided by 1 plus e to the x dx equals negative 1 half of the square of log 2 which is just beautiful i hope you enjoyed the video be sure to like and subscribe thank you see you next time